Hello, my name is Dr. Adam Hyatt and I'm a surgeon at Orthopedic Associates of Lancaster. I also have specialty training in sports medicine and sports surgery and I did a fellowship at the Rothman Institute in Philadelphia specifically to address sports related injuries. The following is a presentation of some of the common sports related injuries that I see in my practice. We'll go over the diagnosis, treatment, and some prevention tips to help you stay healthy in musculoskeletal health. As I said before, I'm excited to be a part of the Lancaster community here at OAL. I grew up in Eastern Pennsylvania and then from there went on to Pennsylvania State University. After graduating, I went to medical school at Thomas Jefferson University at Jefferson Medical College in Philadelphia. I did my residency training in orthopedics at Rutgers University at Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital in New Brunswick. And I did my fellowship training at the Rothman Institute at Thomas Jefferson University Hospitals and had the opportunity to treat many athletes from high school to college age at Villanova University at St. Joseph's University, as well as interacting and treating professional sports athletes with the Phillies, Flyers, and Eagles. I'm excited to be here at Orthopedic Associates of Lancaster to continue to deliver care to athletes of all ages. Some of the objectives today will be to discuss some common athletic injuries that sports medicine physicians and athletic trainers commonly encounter. We'll discuss treatment options that vary from rest, rehabilitation, anti-inflammatory medications to surgical procedures. The key with preventing sports injuries is you want to take small steps to avoid some big problems. So how do people get injuries? It can occur in youth leagues, high school sports, collegiate sports, professional sports. Sometimes it depends on what position you play. Why did it happen? Well, it could be for exercise, fun, recreation, or even monetary compensation. But the treatment really depends on you. There's no holy bible of orthopedic care. Musculoskeletal complaints are the number two reason that people seek medical treatment, which is a close second behind upper respiratory infections. More people than ever are involved in athletic play. This means that more people are getting overuse and traumatic injuries. And this talk could be bad for my business. So we could talk about some sports specific injuries, overhead or throwing athletes, such as baseball players, softball players, swimmers, volleyball players. You should think about the shoulder and contact athletes such as football, rugby, or cross players, think about everything from the shoulder to the hip to the knee. Think about fractures, sprains, and ligament injuries. Endurance athletes such as soccer athletes, track, cross country, and basketball, think about overuse injuries such as tendonitis, cartilage wear, and soreness. And other random athletes like golfers or bowling, think about upper extremity injuries, tendonitis, and wrist pain. Patient-specific sports injuries. In female athletes, think about patellofemoral disorders, disorders of the kneecap, ACL injuries and ankle sprains. In men, think about fractures or dislocations. In kids, we think about fractures or growth plate disturbances. In middle-aged adults or weekend warriors, think about Achilles tendon ruptures, tendonitis, and patellar tendon ruptures. In the more elderly population or advanced age, think about arthritis, joint soreness, and quadriceps ruptures. It's helpful to go over some definitions so we all are speaking the same language. When your doctor talks about the bursa, he's referring to the specialized tissue which is a potential sac in the anatomic places where friction occurs to allow smooth, non-irritating motion of one surface over another. An example would be the olecranon bursa over your elbow. When this becomes inflamed, we call it a bursitis. A tendon. This is a cord-like, primarily collagenous structure that links muscle to bone. If inflammation occurs, it's called tendonitis. Tendon degeneration. Degenerative changes are seen in a great majority of tendons, indicating that spontaneous tendon rupture is a typical clinical end-state manifestation of a degenerative process in the tissue. The role of overuse in the pathogenesis of chronic tendon injuries and disorders is really not completely understood. It's been speculated that when a tendon is overused, it becomes fatigue and loses its basal strength. We talk about a watershed area in tendons, and this is an area where blood vessels traveling from each end of the tendon don't completely reach the midpoint, and there's a relative avascularity. Mechanical effects such as abrasion can have implications in tearing of these tendons. When we talk about a ligament, we're talking about a dense connective tissue that links bone to bone. And when your doctor refers to arthroscopy, he's talking about a procedure. This is one where we use a few pinky nail-sized incisions around the joint 
and we're able to look inside with a camera and view it on a screen. We actually inject the joint with water to allow us to see. We then use specialized tools to either repair or remove damaged tissue from within that joint. So why do sports related injuries happen? If viewed as a function of Newton's third law, athletic injury can be described as resulting from an equal and opposite reaction, which in turn is a result in macro or micro trauma. In macro trauma, equal and opposite forces exceed the strength of a specific anatomic structure. In micro trauma, you get smaller traumas from repeated activity, and these can be cumulative. Over time, this can result in inflammation, pain, and dysfunction. Next, we're going to have a discussion about knee injuries. Knee injuries can be serious if you're unable to play or walk immediately or have a large effusion which is swelling in the knee. Oftentimes, people will describe an audible pop. This occurs with ACL tears or MCL tears or dislocations. Sometimes mechanical symptoms occur such as locking or catching. Crepitus, which is grinding in the knee, is also abnormal if it's unilateral or painful. And the knee giving out with instability or pain can also be a cause of concern. Knee bursitis, as we talked about before, the definition of bursitis. You can get pre-patellar bursitis, which is inflammation of the bursa in front of the kneecap or patella. It occurs when the bursa becomes irritated and it produces too much fluid, which causes it to swell and put pressure on adjacent parts of the knee. Pre-patellar bursitis is often caused by pressure from constant kneeling. So plumbers, roofers, carpet layers, and coal miners, gardeners, are at greater risk for developing this type of a condition. You can help prevent bursitis by following simple tips, such as wearing knee pads if you work on your knees or participating in contact sports such as football, basketball, or wrestling. Rest your knees regularly by stopping and stretching your legs. You can also consider switching activities on a regular basis to avoid prolonged stress on your knees. Applying ice and elevating your knees after a workout can also help. Knee ligament injuries. Let's first talk about the collateral ligaments. These are found on the sides of your knee. The medial collateral ligament is on the inside and the lateral collateral ligament is on the outside. They control the sideways motion of your knee and brace it against unusual movement. The cruciate ligaments, these are found on the inside of your knee. They cross each other to form an X with the anterior cruciate ligament in the front and the posterior cruciate ligament in the back. The cruciate ligaments control the back and forth stability of your knee and the rotational stability of the knee. The anterior cruciate ligament runs diagonally in the middle of the knee and helps prevent sliding in and out in front of the femur. Let's talk a little bit about ACL injuries. Athletes who participate in high demand sports such as soccer, football, and basketball are more likely to injure the ACL ligament. If you've injured your ACL ligament, you may require surgery to regain full function of your knee. This will depend on several factors such as the severity of the injury, your age, and your activity level. During the physical exam, your doctor will check all the structures of your injured knee and compare them to your non-injured knee. Most ligament injuries can be diagnosed through physical examination and specific testing. Oftentimes, x-rays are completed. Typically, these won't show any injury to your ACL, but they can show whether there's associations of injuries. An MRI scan is used to further diagnose ACL tears. This study creates better images of soft tissues like the ACL. Rebuilding the ligament. Most ACL tears cannot be sutured or stitched back together. To surgically repair the ACL and restore knee stability, the ligament must be reconstructed. Your doctor will replace your torn ligament with a tissue graft. This graft acts as scaffolding for a new ligament to grow on. Surgery to rebuild an ACL is done usually with an arthroscopic technique using smaller incisions. Arthroscopic surgery is less invasive. The benefits of this are less pain from surgery, less time spent in a hospital, and quicker recovery times. As you can see, rehabilitation can take some time, six to nine months to fully recuperate and return to full activities and activity with sporting play. At Orthopedic Associates of Lancaster, we have many talented physicians that can perform your ACL reconstruction. This is done at an outpatient setting at North Point Surgical Centers. Meniscus tears are among the more common knee-related injuries. Athletes, particularly those that play contact sports, are at risk for meniscus tears. However, anyone at any age can tear a meniscus. When people talk about cartilage in the knee, they are usually referring 
to either articular cartilage, the smooth surface of the knee, or a torn meniscus. Meniscal tears can occur in different ways. Tears are noted by how they look, as well as where the tear occurs. Common tears include a bucket handle tear, a flap tear, or a radial tear. Sports-related meniscus tears occur along with other knee injuries, oftentimes in conjunction with an ACL tear. Sudden meniscus tears often happen during sports. Players may squat or twist the knee, causing a tear. Direct contact, like a tackle, is sometimes involved as well. Older people are more likely to have a degenerative type of meniscus tear. The cartilage weakens and wears thin over time. Aged, worn tissue is more prone to tear and just an awkward twist or getting up from a tear may be enough to have an injury. How your orthopedic surgeon treats your tear will depend on the type of tear you have, its size, and its location. The outside one-third of the meniscus has a rich blood supply. A tear in this, quote, red zone may heal on its own or often may be repaired. A longitudinal tear is an example of a type of tear as well in contrast to the inner two-thirds of the meniscus which lacks a good blood supply. The nutrients come from blood. Tears in this red-white zone or white zone typically have poor healing potential. Complex tears with thin or warm cartilage often have poor healing potential. Because the pieces cannot grow back together, tears in this zone are usually trimmed surgically. Along with the type of tear you have, your age, activity level, and related injuries will factor into the treatment plan. Now we're gonna talk about knee injury prevention. The key is don't skip the exercises. Even if you have some mild arthritis, the key is to know your limits. Strength training may focus heavily on building up the muscles in the quadriceps and the hamstrings, and this can decrease pain and help people better tolerate arthritis and other structural knee problems. Staying active helps control weight and build muscle both of which can help you protect your knees from further damage. The best exercise for people with structural knee problems such as arthritis include non-impact aerobic exercises such as walking on ground level, training with an elliptical machine, or using a stationary bike, swimming, or doing other water aerobics. It's also wise to avoid activities that put, puts extra stress on the knees such as kneeling and deep knee bends and downhill running. Stretches that focus on the calf hamstring, and quadricep muscles take pressure off the knees and the kneecaps. A well-conditioned, flexible body is less likely to develop overuse problems in the knee. Your weight plays a major role in knee pain. If you walked around all day with a backpack that had a 10-pound weight in it, you would feel it on your achy back, hips, and knees at the end of the day. With each step people take, four times their body weight is transmitted to the knee joint. That means if you lose just 20 pounds, you could reduce knee pain by up to 50%. Supportive and comfortable shoes can take pressure off the knee by promoting proper leg alignment and balance. So it's no surprise that wearing high heels is a common cause of knee pain. If your heel is closer to the floor in low pumps or flats, your thigh muscles won't have to work as hard to maintain stability, which is easier on the knees. A sedentary lifestyle has been proposed as a main reason for poor basilar circulation for tendons and presumably is at least partly responsible for a high number of tendon problems in people with sedentary lifestyles who occasionally take part in high physical or activity sporting demands. Remember, treatment is always patient specific and tailored towards your specific needs. Some final thoughts and resources for you to visit for musculoskeletal related injuries. Overuse injuries and tendon degeneration have been speculated to cause chronic tendon problems by disturbing the micro and microvascular structure of the tendon, resulting in insufficiency and local blood circulation. Decreased blood flow simultaneous with an increased activity may result in a decreased oxygen capacity, impaired nutrition, and energy metabolism, and together these factors are likely to play a role in the sequence of events leading up to a specific injury. It's true, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure.